Hi everyone, my name is Xenia and if you're here, you're probably interested in sustainability, zero waste, minimalism and mental health. I'm recording this video in uh, the month of June and I'm going to upload in it uh, in June, uh, which is Pride Month, if you can probably see from my nails. Today I wanted to talk about my experience with gender and sexuality and uh, my journey toward accepting myself. To start, hi. I'm bi. <laughs> I'm bisexual, which means that I am attracted to more than one gender. I think I've always known uh, that I am bi, um, even when I was small, when, when I had a crush um, on a girl in a kindergarten and in school. But it took me a while to unpack the um, internal homophobia and biphobia and uh, understand, you know, before it clicked, you know, oh, right, I'm bi. Uh, before that, uh, I just thought I'm heterosexual. I just really, really like kissing girls. <laughs> Uh, I even even uh, had uh, sex and relationship with girls and I still thought I was hetero and I think this this is ridiculous now but I think it speaks to how strong the um, heteronormativity and gender binary in our society is. Speaking of gender uh, I also was discovering my gender identity throughout my life. Um, when uh, I was a teenager and I was attracted to girls, I was thinking, oh, what if I'm trans? Because only boys can be attracted to girls, right? That's how it works. <laughs> and I even um, experimented with chest binding, so wearing um, some bondage against the chest to make it flat and I, I would dress androgynously or I could dress in my uh, dad's clothes and it actually felt good uh, it felt like it was something something forbidden and it made it really exciting um, and, but in the end I realized okay I am actually happy with uh, the gender I was assigned by the birth female, which makes me a cisgender woman, um, but at the same time I don't um, subscribe to uh, my gender, so to the um, ex expectations of society, and I don't, uh, don't like the gender binary that we have <coughs> in a society. Um, and I don't think that things should be divided into feminine and masculine and that's why I identify as genderqueer it may be even non-binary however I don't present hydrogenous I still present a uh, feminine but uh, my pronouns are she they because I also feel like I am a female, but sometimes not. I, I would rather have the gender division erased um, at all. You can see my uh, pr pronouns everywhere on my socials. I think it always says she, they as well. And you can call me by either. I'm fine with either. Why this video? Why am I making this video? Uh, I want to achieve two goals. I want to show that it's completely normal to change how you understand yourself, your sexuality and your gender throughout life. And I also want to uh, maybe help some people understand that they're queer. And uh, if you aren't, if you are completely cis and uh, hetero, uh, and, but you want to be an ally, uh, I want to help you how to uh, communicate with uh, LGBTQ plus folks.
One important thing that helped uh, a lot of my friends and acquaintances is uh, viewing uh, gender and sexuality not only on the level of um, sexual attraction um, to other genders, but also to the degree of uh, attraction that you feel. Uh, that's what the A in uh, LGBTQIA plus stands for. I cannot really speak for asexual people because I'm not uh, ace. However, there, there is a term that helped my friends, which is demisexual or demisexual. I first heard it from uh, from a video from a former uh, BuzzFeed creator when she was talking about her sexuality, how she understood she's not uh, straight, like she's queer. I don't like using straight because it means that, you know, um, that means that, uh, you know, hetero people are uh, straight and something that it's like everything is right with them and um, gay people are not right, not straight. I, uh, that's why I prefer hetero, not hetero, queer. Uh, word. So she was saying like how she understood that she's queer and she understood it also because she is demisexual and she's on the spectrum of asexuality where you can be attracted uh, sexually to other people but only if you develop certain romantic or any kind of close attraction to them. You would meet someone for a date and um, you need much more time to feel attracted to them sexually than other people because you need to build actual relationship with them and in, in any sense you need to care about them so uh, honestly personally i'm not like that i am what they call um, allosexual so i am allosexual which means that i can uh know a person for five minutes and feel sexual attraction to them uh, which is why i think i remember it was sometimes weird talking to some of my friends who are now identifying as demisexual and um yeah they are um they would say that they were not enjoying having sex with people that they just met or that they really needed a connection uh, to do that and I could not relate. <laughs> That's why it's important, I think, to uh, put this information out there uh, about our own experiences like this creator did and like I am trying to do so that people know that there is a huge, uh, you know, an amalgam of um, combinations of gender, sexuality, sexual and romantic attraction. If you are um, an ally, um, well, the number one thing that you can do is uh, educate yourself and um, do not use other people as a thesaurus, but just look it up. Another thing is uh, using uh, correct pronouns and names for people. If you, my pronouns are she, they, uh, please respect them and same goes for other folks. I also prefer, uh, I don't really like um, gendered greetings and uh, gendered addresses like sir, madam, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I Even in professional communication and in maybe even especially in professional communication, I prefer when people use words like hello team, Hi everyone, uh, instead of saying hi guys uh, or hi la dear ladies and gentlemen. I think it's not only respectful to non-binary folks but also to people like me who just don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to be divided into groups by gender. And before you say, you know, uh, I'm trying to police the way you speak or something like that. Oh, uh, you know, language changes throughout time. Uh, language is the lens uh, through which we see the world. For example, in some languages there are more words that describe 
and um, and phenomenon that does not exist or exists in another language, but you don't know, uh, you, you don't have a word for that. For example, how do you call the back of the knee? In English or in other languages, you just say the back of the knee, but there are languages where there is actually a word for it. Or, for example, uh, you, everyone knows this thing with um, some native people over the north uh, that they have more words identifying snow because uh, this is the environment they live in and they need much more identification for different types of snow than people that live in uh, other geographies. And um, that's why I think that uh, changing the language, just in our language, is definitely not policing uh, the lang your language or being um, uh, like stopping your freedom of speech. No, I think it's a general evolution of things uh, of the language. So for example, why do why am I speaking uh, English right now, not Latin, when Latin used to be a common language spoken uh, 2000 years ago, but not anymore, because uh, language and international language as well is developing. If you're an ally, what else can you do? Yeah, I would say also, let's normalize not assuming anyone's gender or sexuality straight away if, uh, because uh, queer people uh, don't owe you looking a certain way uh, do i look like a bisexual i don't know i don't think bisexual people have uh, a certain uh, look i don't think um, non-binary folks have a certain look uh, not everyone uh, is uh, androgynous who is non-binary uh, or uh, how do asexual people look we definitely can't tell so i think that uh, the most respectful and easy things actually uh, would be just uh, unassuming and just using gender neutral words to describe things like uh, parent uh, siblings do you have any siblings why do you say sisters or brothers like why it's even uh, more economical you, you don't even you you have uh words to say uh it more efficiently it's sibling uh husband or wife why why would we say that oh uh i would rather say are you married or uh do you have a partner significant other lover you don't have to say boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife you can say spouse too i always always try to call my boyfriend my partner because i think that it's uh normalizing gender neutral ways we call people and of course other things like professions this one is not new and i think it's already uh like if you're still saying uh fireman catch up update your vocabulary a little bit everyone uh, uses you know flight attendant uh, firefighter and uh, police officer and stuff like that even back when i was learning english it was already a thing so it's been 15 years we have to catch up <laughs> Uh, all right, so my queer linguistic rant is over now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Do you have any questions uh, to me? Do you have any questions about uh, my experiences? Are you also bi? Uh, hit me up in the comments. Thank you once again. And uh, as all YouTubers and vloggers are supposed to say, please like this video, uh, hit the bell notification button and subscribe. Bye.